Uh, well, hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Evan. I'm one of the ministers at St. Mary's Anglican Church. And today for Psalm a Day, we're looking at Psalm 38. Um, I'm going to explore some of the, uh, the themes that the psalm deals with, uh, particularly pain. Um, so how about we get straight into it? If you haven't read the psalm already, uh, please do that. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to uh, explore some little bits of it. Um, so read it first, then come back. Okay, so um, in the psalm, uh, I think, uh, and Trent and I were discussing, uh, that we think we, we think we see three kinds of pain. Okay, well, the first kind of pain we see is uh, the Lord's discipline on David. If you have a look at verses 1, 2, and 3, you can see that uh, David uh, seems to know, particularly in verse 4, David knows that he's sinned, and he knows that there is there are things happening to him which he is attributing to God. But does this sound right? Does that sound fair? Would, would God punish or discipline those uh, people that he, a person that he loves? I think, you know, you could twist the words and say, oh, that God is clearly, uh, he, so that David has done wrong. And so, you know, God is, um, God is, you know, hurting him. Uh, God is torturing him. But that's, That'd be taking taking it way too far out of context. Instead, we know that uh, the Lord uh, disciplines us, and He refines us to bring us to a better knowledge of Him, uh, to help us to love Him more, but also to break us out of our sinful ways. Um, and so, the passage that we think of when we talk about this is one Peter one, and also Hebrews twelve, which is very helpful. And so, in Hebrews twelve, the writer says not to make light of the Lord's discipline, because it's a sign that God loves you and that you are a legitimate son or daughter of God. And see, if we're not disciplined by God, we're not legitimate children. Just like if a child isn't disciplined by their parents and they do wrong, then the parents don't care for the child. Or my dog. You know, if my dog runs out on the road and I don't discipline him, or if he does something else wrong, I don't discipline him, then I have no regard for him, his well-being, and other, the well-being of other people and things around me. And so the fact that the Lord does discipline means he does love and he does care for our well-being. So does the Lord do this always? Does he always uh, pay back our sin with punishment, with discipline? No. And I think just... I am proof enough here recording this video with the wonderful things around me that I have, and perhaps you are also proof on the testament that you can give in your lives that I'm, I'm fairly sure that you haven't been punished for every wrong thing that you've done. Maybe we'd both be dead if that was true. Um, so, I, so I don't think that this is the case for every time, but um, David knows he, do, he has done wrong here. And the guilt which has been stirred up inside him uh, causes him anguish. And perhaps that is the discipline of the Lord here for David, his guilt within him. Uh, the second kind of pain that we see is one caused by other people. And we see that in verses 11 and onwards. Uh, now, why would other people hurt David? Isn't he the king of Israel? Well, yes, he is. But he's also an inhabitant of a sinful world, full of other sinful people. We definitely see how sinful David is. Um, but as we all know, people sin against God and against us all the time. And that's hard. And sometimes we feel physical pain because of that. Sometimes we feel mental and emotional anguish because of that. And it's just part and parcel of living in a sinful world. The final pain that we see is one that comes from David's decaying body. So he's becoming an old man, and we see some things uh, like 13 and, and 14, uh, 7, 8, and 9, and 10. He's becoming an old man. And so, once again, part and parcel of living in a world that is sinful means that we decay, and we break down, and we die. And so he feels that pain. Um, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm coming to the age where I'm leaving, I guess, the childhood body 
behind and starting to take on the middle-aged body and I am starting to feel aches and pains. I can't imagine what's, what it might be like for some people out there. Um, and so perhaps I have a little taste of this. You might know this a lot more than me. Um, but it's part and parcel of living in a sinful world. Now, having seen those three pains, what I also want to talk about is um, three attitudes that David shows us how to act in these. First one of which is uh, that God is sovereign. See, if David didn't think God was sovereign, then he wouldn't be taking all his problems to God. He knows that God is capable of removing all of these things. And so he asks God to do that. And uh, we see that uh, in verse 1 and verse 21 and 22. Um, he knows that God is all-powerful, and he treats God that way. Secondly, uh, he recognizes that and he treats God as love, and uh, in him salvation and peace is available. Right? So God, God's not a vindictive God. He isn't, uh, David isn't praying for deliverance. From God. David isn't praying um, that he would escape God. No, he's praying to the God who loves, who is love, and the God who gives salvation, and the God of peace, that he might return to that, that David might be brought back into that salvation and brought back into that peace by the God who does love him. So discipline isn't out of character for the Lord. In fact, it fits right in it. Um, but an even bigger picture of that character is his love for us. It's a love that David knows and David longs to return to. And so I guess we can know and understand that uh, God isn't someone that I need to run from. God isn't someone I need to be afraid of. Yes, there are some things that I may undergo which I won't like, especially if I have to change the way I live. But God is the God of love and peace and salvation. Without those things, where are you? Uh, finally, pain is not eternal. And this is clear on David's mind as he's running through. He knows that all of these things are things which he can be delivered from. And so he cries out to God and he says, God, take them all away from me. Because I know this is not the way this is supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be feeling like this. It's not supposed to be this hard. And that's the attitude that we can have as well in our lives. In fact, we have a much clearer picture of what the future is like than David. And we know that from Revelation 21 that in the end there will be no more crying or fear or pain or anger or sin. And so we look forward to that day when we will be saved. We look forward to that day when there is total peace, when there is no pain, and we can live together in harmony. How wonderful is that? I'm so excited. Um, and I'm sure those of us in pain can feel that and look forward to that now. So, uh, closing thoughts. I think the first thing that I thought when I came to the psalm was that, you know, um, are people going to think that... Uh, particularly with the way that the world is right now, are we being punished for some sort of sin? Um, I think, first of all, we've got to be, we've got to be, we've got to do really well to distance ourselves from that sort of language. Um, because whilst that did happen in the time of the Bible, what also happened is that a, a prophet brought a message very, very clearly saying, this is why these things will happen and this is when it will stop. We've had none of those things. And so when things pop up like this and we say, oh, it's because God is punishing us or God is judging us. Well, first of all, we've got to take a step back and look at all of the passages that I've looked at and then look at how God operates. And I think once we do that, we'll see that that's not the case. Once we see and look at all these passages and see the way God operates, we'll see that uh, God is all powerful and sovereign, that God is a God of love and that our pain is not eternal. And so we can cry out to God like David does here and bring all of our pain to him and know that God will take it away sooner or later and that we will be free of pain. 
sooner or later. Grace and peace to you.